Earlier today, Boris Johnson uh, extraordinarily blamed the Ukraine invasion on Putin's toxic masculinity. That's right, his toxic masculinity, and claimed it wouldn't have happened if the Russian president was a woman. Take a look. Putin was a woman, which I, he obviously isn't, but uh, if he were, I really don't think he would have embarked on a crazy, macho war of, of invasion uh, and violence in the way that he has. If, if you want a perfect example of toxic masculinity, it's, it, it's what he's doing in, in Ukraine. Well, personally, I'd take a timid Boris Johnson to quote the assessment of the Kremlin's chief propagandist over a horseback riding warmonger any day. But what do you think? With the Prime Minister's comments about Putin in mind, do women make better leaders? Email dan at gbnews.uk or tweet us at gbnews. And please vote in the online poll. That, again, is at gbnews on Twitter. But to duke it out, I'm joined by an all-female lineup of writer and political commentator Christine Hamilton, royal author Lady Colin Campbell, superstar broadcaster Leilani Dowding, and author Anna May Mangan. Anna, let me start with you. Do women make better leaders? Well, do you mean me, Anna May? Yeah, please, Anna May. Uh, <laughs> well, I think Boris Johnson, if there was a prize for talking drivel at the Olympics, he'd won it. He'd have won it every year. Being a maniac has got nothing to do with gender, creed, colour, race, nothing. It's just that you're a maniac, and you can be equally maniacal whether you're a man or a woman. So his comments are embarrassing, particularly at the G7 when he was sat around a table with eight men and one woman. It's, it's just irony at its best. But he, he's in charge, and it, he, he thinks that a woman couldn't do a better job. It's laughable. And I've got news for him, that having breasts doesn't make you weak of mind. Of course women can be great leaders. The sad thing is they don't get the opportunity. Well, I think he's suggesting to his defence that women would not be warmongers. I mean, Anna May, you mention physical anatomy. Isn't the issue with male leaders testosterone? And all that willy-waving. So what does Boris Johnson think women leaders would do? They'd be busy knitting or painting their nails or maybe doing the washing up. Is that why they can't make decisions and drive things forward? Pa perhaps Personally, they'd be negotiating, Anna May. If I had to choose who I wanted to tackle a big thing, I've got a great husband. But believe me, women and all my friends multitask better. And also, this thing about women being mothers, they're less likely to be warmongers. So don't fathers love their children and want them to survive? The fathers want nuclear war for children all over the world. It just, it just like so many things he says, it makes no sense. But Anna May, uh, aren't men fragile egos, you know, and, and aren't they show-offs, desperate about no, their I'll reputation? Tell you what they, are. they seem to be hangers-on. They get into these jobs and they just don't let go and they don't make space for women. And they're appointing people who are like themselves. They don't want women coming in. I mean, there's this ridiculous thing about um, Stella Creasy wanting to bring her baby into... Um, into the House of Commons, like, that's OK. Women can work and leave their babies at home and do a great job, and so many of us do, and we don't get any credit for it. Lady Colin Campbell, should we put women in charge of the world? Well, we have had very good female leaders and we've had very bad female leaders. You only need to think of Mrs Gandhi or Mrs Bandaranaika to see that having breasts doesn't qualify you for good leadership. You know, sex, I agree with anime, has absolutely nothing to do with leadership. You're, if you're a good leader, you're a good leader, irrespective of your sex. Having said that, I think Boris could turn down the Churchillian rubbish by a notch or six, you know, because he is using for his own domestic reasons uh, the, the, the Ukrainian crisis. And I'm not sure that's particularly responsible to either us or indeed to the Ukrainian people. Uh, Lady Colin Campbell, of course, you've uh, written so much about the royal family. The Queen, a biological woman, is a much better monarch than Prince Charles ever will be as King Charles. Well, I think we, I mean, she's had 70 years on the job. There's no way he's going to have anything like that length of time. 
And practice does make perfect. So I think, you know, in fairness to Prince Charles and the Queen, sex, again, has nothing to do with it. But isn't the Queen um, brilliant because she's a woman, Colin? Because the bottom line is that she doesn't care about her ego, her reputation. She's not thin-skinned. No, historically, no. actually, there's research done that historically says that queens um, get into more war wars than kings, and that's the European royalty. So there has actually been a study done, um, and queens were the bigger warmongers. And look at uh, Jacinda Ardern. She is as tyrannical as they come. So I don't think... <laughs> Um, Boris was correct in any of what he said. And also, I want to say this whole thing about toxic masculinity, there's been a real attack on masculinity with men. And it's not masculinity that's the problem. It's actually the lack of. It's the beta men that are catastrophizing everything that are the problem here. People like Matt Hancock, Chris Whitty, it's all catastrophizing everything. Everything's a big drama. They've got to lock everyone down. They need to exert their control because they have no control of their personal behavior, their personal presence or their purpose, so it's locking down and, and controlling everyone else. And that's the problem. It's the beta males that are the problem, but not masculine men like Roy, Ron DeSantis, who's just poised and confident and in control. Uh, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, of course, who pushed back on a lot of the COVID measures and now enjoys a lower per capita COVID death rate than lockdown-loving California. But Leilani Dowding, the problem with male leaders, the alpha males of which you're so fond, is that they're obsessed with their legacy. Well, I don't think that's the alpha male. I think that's the beta male that's like that. They're the ones that, that are insecure. The type that are like Napoleon, little man syndrome. You know, they have to they have to show something. It's not an alpha man who's strong and confident that's like that. So you know, I don't think Boris is right in what he's saying. And, you know, there's a lot of women out there that get into positions of power and they have this kind of chip on their shoulder, like Jacinda Ardern, well, who has to exert her control. Leilani, uh, Boris Johnson, you know, he wanted to be world king when he was a child, didn't he? He obviously is obsessed with, with becoming Winston Churchill Mark II. Tony Blair yeah. wanted to be uh, basically, you know, king of Europe. He was obsessed with the EU and wanted to become president of that organization. Margaret Thatcher, she didn't ask for any thanks. She didn't seek any legacy. She just got things done. That yeah. is and true. And what people say... Uh, what uh, people Le say Leilani, Le Thatcher. Leilani, comment on that briefly. I'll come back to you, Anna May. Leilani, Margaret okay. Thatcher, a classic, a typical <laughs> woman. She got stuff done. No fuss. Yeah. Didn't want anyone to thank her. She understood that she had to transform Britain, and so she did. But again, it's not because she's a woman. That's just the strength of her character. It was in her. It was her character that was like that. It had nothing to do with the fact that she was a woman. And I'm sure there's many men that are the same way. Um, I mean, she's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, but again, it's her personality and character traits rather than the fact that she, she was a woman. Well, I would never make a habit of disagreeing with my friend Leilani Dowding. But on Thatcher, I do. I think Christine Hamilton that one of the reasons why Margaret Thatcher was so successful was because she was a woman, because she took a female approach in a man's world. I think that's right, and to a large extent. And if we can go back to the original where we started, which is what Boris said about Putin, I think it's highly unlikely that if it was Vladimir Putina, we would have had the invasion of, of Ukraine. And if you look back at British history, we've had some amazing female leaders who went to war Bodicea, she very nearly wiped out the Romans. She was the first original Eurosceptic, but she wasn't attacking, she was defending. Elizabeth I sent the Armada to defeat the Spanish. She wasn't attacking, she was defending. Maggie Thatcher, the Falklands, the task force, defending. That's what women do. They don't Victoria! Attack. Victor I don't mean Beckham. Queen Victoria, who Queen was, Victoria. was, was I mean, the, the, the CEO, so the commander-in-chief of, of the British are, Empire. Are examples of both sexes who are brilliant Let's and a disaster. We want right now. We want Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. And I think, generally speaking, women have less ego. They have more self-awareness. They have better emotional intelligence, but far less aggression. 
um, and a little bit more humility, generally speaking, than men. So I think, uh, you know, you, of course you can find an example to suit anything. And, and um, yeah. I forget who mentioned the Queen. I think it was Lady Colin. But, I mean, she has been the most remarkable leader for 70 years. And I think there is a general sense of foreboding about what's going to happen when we get King Charles. I mean, what well, if uh, this is not most, Queen Anne? Exactly. Uh, can I ask you, um, Christine, in relation to Thatcher, for example, that... It's, she's misunderstood, isn't she? she you wrote a book called uh, The Book of Great British Battle Axes, and she was characterised on the That's satirical show expression. Spitting Image as being dressed as, 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 you know, as a man in, in a suit with a cigar. But she deployed her female qualities to get the job done, didn't she? She, well, she did not become a man to, to do the job. She, she was very, very aware of the power of her femininity, and somebody else on the other side of the political divide was too was Barbara Castle. Um, both very, very aware that they were attractive women, and they, they used that to their advantage. They knew that they could get a lot of men round their little fingers. And while we're on political leaders, um, I, I don't know about you, but I think that um, as far as the Labour Party is concerned, they would be far better off with Angela Rayner than they are with Keir Starmer. I don't more, agree more with anything she says or and, does, and, and except, he, but I think from that Here's the thing, Leilani, Leilani, Leilani Dowding, Leilani Dowding, Dominic, one big difference Dominic. between <laughs> men and women is that women, Leilani, are better at listening. <laughs> I think, I don't know if my fiancé would agree with that. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what do you think about this, Anna May? What, what are your thoughts about what everyone's had to say? Well, I think that this business about feminine wiles is rubbish because when women leaders are successful, everyone gives them, they say they're, they're like men, they think like men, they act like men, which is why they're so successful. And going back to Angela Rayner, who was just mentioned, Dominic Raab actually winked at her at question time today across the House of Commons. He wouldn't do that to another, another man. It was so disrespectful. So I just think that women have to fight so hard to maintain their positions and, and to get the power and keep it. Uh, and I, uh, I actually don't think that Margaret Leilani. Thatcher was that feminine. I think she did take on a, quite a lot of like m masculine characteristics, not in the way she looked or anything, but in her, in the way she came or stereotypical masculine characteristics to become the leader that she was. Uh, Lady Collins. Yeah, Lady Colin Campbell, uh, last, last word to you. I don't think that leadership is necessarily a masculine or a feminine thing. I think leadership is a human quality that some people possess and other people don't. I think sex has nothing to do with it. I think it's a personal thing that's born of a strong and positive and good character. I think it's and that's the reality. And basically, it doesn't matter what your bits are. Uh, Lady yes, Colin sir. Campbell, ca yeah, I noticed uh, a cat appeared behind you just a moment ago. <laughs> is it a boy or a girl? He's a boy. He's a boy. All right. And is he a natural, a natural leader? Is he a good mouser? Well, actually, he's not a natural leader. He's a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Boris Johnson. Um, look, as long as he's got all his bits, that's all I care about. Christine, we've only got a couple of seconds. Who would make a better prime minister, you or Neil? Oh, a triumvirate. We'd have, we'd have you <laughs> in as well, Mark, the three of us. Done. I'll be your chancellor. I'll serve under you any time, Christine. And by the way, you look fantastic. Hope you're feeling better after your knee operation. What a brilliant debate. My profound thanks to the top author, Anna May Mangan, Leilani Dowding, who is a broadcaster, of course, a regular on this show on the panel, and royal author, Lady Colin Campbell, and political commentator, Christine Hamilton. Well, what do you think? Uh, who do you agree with? Do women make better leaders? Thomas on email says, well, not in Scotland, they don't. <laughs> Can't imagine who you're talking about there, Thomas. Adam says on Twitter, I think women would come at problems from a different perspective, which is much needed. We've had some great male leaders, but more often than not, most have been forgettable. And Chris says on Twitter, being a bad or good leader is not about sex, but the qualities the individual holds. So... Do women make better leaders? Uh, this is the official verdict of our Twitter poll. 37% say women do make better leaders. 63% say they don't.
Thank you for that debate. Lots more to come.